Hey everybody, uh, welcome to the uh, TEA University's, University's Welcome Back webinar. Uh, this is going to be an overview about the NextGen program and the uh, TEA University program. So for those of you who don't know anything about the TEA University program, it'll be an opportunity to learn about it and apply if you are interested in joining. And for those of you clubs who are already established, it'll be a refresher for the fall so you get started on the right foot. I'm Diane Buckwalder. I am currently a show set designer with American Scenic. And uh, the Next Gen program really helped me get a solid start in the, the TEA and the industry. Um, so I'm also the team leader for the university relations team. Um, I also have Mallory Paddock with me, who is another member of the university relations team. And you'll meet all of us as we go throughout the presentation. Um, so we want to make sure that you see our faces, you know who's chatting to you, um, reaching out to you throughout the year in support. And uh, please feel free during the presentation to ask questions in the chat. Um, our, the whole team is going to be collecting those questions uh, throughout the presentation and uh, we'll answer all your questions at the end. Um, if you're here representing a club, you can also sound off in the chat and uh, we'll give you a little bit of shout out later. So we're going to jump in with Marissa Blake, who's the next gen chair. And she's going to give you just a brief overview about what the Next Gen program is, for those of you who don't know. So, one moment. Hey guys, I'm Marissa Blake, like Diane just said, I am the Next Gen Chair. Um, and I just want to give a quick in, um, intro to the TEA Next Gen program as a whole before we go into the TEA University Club specifically. Um, that being because uh, I think it, hopefully that there are some new people here tonight who have just kind of stumbled upon, hey, what's the TEA? And maybe have no idea um, what we're all about. Uh, so a little bit about me before we get started. I um, I hope like some of you tonight, uh, I had just pulled an all-nighter. I was in grad school and my professor who was teaching the senior entertainment course I was taking begged and pleaded for us to go to this TA event. Um, and so I put on a nice black sweatshirt and a nice black headband <laughs> and pulled myself together and went. And I'm so glad that I did because that um, that got me to where I am today. Um, that set off uh, going to work in Orlando and then working for Disney. And that's also how I got my job at the shed through those connections. So um, I applaud you guys for being a part of this. I really think that you get out of the TA what you put into it. Um, fun fact, Diane and I actually started the first Next Gen TEA or TEA University Club at SCAD. But I think that was back in 2012. Um, we were just such big fans of TEA. We walked up to Kyle Auger at the time and just kind of said, hey, can we do like a university club? Um, and so that's how it is. And I can't thank the TEA um, University Relations task force enough they work tirelessly for you guys so when they say to check in please just check in with them we want to hear what you guys are doing all around the country so i'm going to turn off my webcam now <laughs> and uh, really just explain what the tea is so the tea is all about extraordinary experiences so that's any um thing that is integrated storytelling and entertainment of built environments um and an ever growing list of destinations worldwide. It's all about the visitor experience. So all of these places, you might think themed entertainment, you might only think theme park, but really it's anything from resorts to casinos, zoos and aquariums, botanical gardens, museums, um, any of those pop-up experiences, or even branded um, shopping or retail experiences. Here are some of the images of every year we do um, two large uh, conferences that we host. And these are the award winners from the TA Summit and Thea's Gala that happens every spring. Okay, so I wish that this chat was live um, and that you guys could actually respond uh, to me verbally. But I would, what I wanna ask is what is something um, that you see here? And the answer that I would be looking for would be that it's not just designers. Everyone in the TEA is anyone from project managers to coordinators, producers, musicians, architects, fabricators, illustrators, you name it. So you may think, oh, well, I'm not a theme park designer. It doesn't mean to be, um, that does not mean that you're not a member of the TEA. 
Actually, uh, well, a good friend of mine is an estimator, and so that means he estimates the cost of projects before they start to happen to kind of give a budget. So the thing about the TA is we're split up all around the world into four, div four divisions. So the Asia Pacific Division, Eastern North American, Western North American, and Europe and Middle East. Uh, so out of that, uh, the Eastern uh, division typically is the biggest. We compete with the Western, but we are actively trying not just through NextGen, but also through the International Board to increase um, membership and activity in Asia Pacific and EME. Uh, this is our current membership by size, but I think this is outdated because I think we're closer to 700 NextGen members, which is excellent. Um, and that's something that Diane and Mallory will talk about is that you may not be um, an actual paying next year member, you may just be a club member, but we hope that um, we've inspired you and you've seen the value in next year membership and um, opt to become a full next year member and they will explain the difference between that. So here are some great pictures of um, our next year events that we've hosted throughout the years. A lot of these are TA university clubs. Um, a lot of these are get-togethers or next-gen members at different conferences. That's something we try to do at, at each of our large conferences, host an informal mixer so you guys can meet one another. A lot of my good friends are here on this call that I met many years ago when we were next-gen members ourselves. So the definition of next-gen is if you are currently in school or three years out of school or three years new to the industry, which is something we're really working on. Uh, Joe Fox is a great example of that. He had 15 years experience in a different industry and came in and took advantage of next gen membership and is now with a really great firm, EXP, um, in the industry and very happy. So there's a lot of things the next gen programming does. Um, and in order to have access to these, um, you do have to be a next gen member. But there is great benefits of the TA University um, Club as well, which Diane and Mallory will explain more, like I mentioned. Um, so we do, for all of our events, for all of our large TA events, we have next-gen pricing and we do give out scholarships. Um, we do have uh, TA events all over the world, not just those two large conferences that I mentioned. Um, and there's plenty of opportunities for networking. And I think the most important is the professional development that you get out of it. Um, but again, you have to put it in to get it out. So as an NextGen club member, you have opportunity to network with other students and um, work on projects collectively together within your clubs that you can share with the larger TA um, population. You can invite um, professionals to come speak at your schools and really work together to develop those professional skills. And then as a registered TEA member, um, you, meant you get the discounts that I mentioned to all of the TEA um, events. You get access to those TEA events. Um, you apply for members only event scholarships that I mentioned. Uh, we have a great event we put out twice a year called GibGab, which is a speed networking. Um, a lot of people I know have gotten jobs out of those. Um, you can do these monthly webinars that we're doing. And also, probably the most important is create a TA profile um, where you can put your portfolio and search for mentors and jobs and internships. So, <laughs> this is kind of the exciting slide. What is the Next Gen Committee working on? So, we just got approved to do a monthly, a bi monthly webinar series, which will be coming out. Um, we're working on a larger job fair and what that could be in conjunction with GibGab. Uh, we're working on how can we get all of the TA university clubs together, maybe at that job fair, and working on a channel, a way to kind of get you all connected to one another um, more often. So I, that's, I know it's kind of vague, but there's more to come, and I hope you guys are excited and um, ready to tune in. So I want to pass it back over uh, to Diane and Mallory, who are going to share more specific information to the TA um, at university clubs. All right, hold one second. There we go. So now we're going to talk a little bit more about these 
clubs specifically, and a lot of you already know some about that. Um, we have, I believe, 32 active clubs currently. And I know some of you are on the line tonight. We've got Vanderbilt, uh, University of Central Florida, Cal Poly Pomona, Notre Dame, CalArts, uh, University of Nevada, Las Vegas, Cal State Long Beach, Long Beach, uh, UC Berkeley, Ringling, Georgia Tech, and Carnegie Mellon. So thank you to all of you guys who have called in and um, I hope you're asking questions. And if I missed anyone, please let me know. But it's great to have you on the line. And as you can tell, there are clubs all over the US. So um, there's always someone local to reach out to. So what exactly are we missing? the university clubs? Uh, it is the segment specifically within the next gen program that is oriented towards students. So for those of you who are pursuing this industry academically and professionally. Um, it's a way for us to get involved with you and for you to reach out to each other. And even if it's just social, the TEA is all about networking. So it's a great place to meet other students who are interested in the same thing as you are. So how does that break down? We've got relationships, resources, and recognition. Um, for those of you who are listening uh, to find out what a club is for the first time, this will be a general overview. And again, those clubs who are already established, this will be a good refresher for the start of the year. So relationships. The networking is a key aspect for the TEA. Um, it's a part of its foundation and it's not, it sounds more intimidating than it is, but it really is just about forging those relationships. So for the clubs, like I said, there's about 32 of you right now. So there's a lot of opportunity to meet other students and those are going to be your future peers in the industry one day. So it's a really great opportunity to make friends early before you're even involved, more involved in the industry. But it's also relationships um, within the greater industry. So you've got contact with other clubs. You can bring in speakers from the industry. Um, we will help you find folks if, or another great opportunity is to reach out to local companies and find out who is around you that you can maybe do a visit with or can get come speak to you in person. Um, we also hold a lot of events within the TA and the Next Gen specific program. Uh, things like educational lectures, networking mixers, um, skill building specifically for students and young professionals. There's conferences. We have a whole variety. So there's a lot of things you can do. So resources. Another aspect um, there's a lot of support, specific, uh, specific resources, and then support from our team. So resources for establishing clubs. There is the club directory, which is a listing of all the clubs and uh, all of the student leadership so that you can reach out to each other directly. Um, there's a leadership Facebook group that we moderate. So for those of you who um, are involved in the leadership team, you can ask questions, get help from us um, at any time. Uh, and we love to see you guys post there. So please feel free at any time to ask questions, share updates. We love it. There, We have uh, membership info and pr promotional materials. So if you're interested in joining as a next gen member or um, promoting Look, resources to promote that within your club. We've got handouts and other uh, printouts, things available for you. <clears throat> there, as a TEA club, you'll get branding unique to your club, so uh, endorsement from the TEA. There's also an archive of FIA awards, which is a absolutely great and I believe underutilized resource if you're looking to see what uh, the pinnacle of achievement is and recognition within the industry. It's a great asset you'll find out about the awardees for each category as well as who works on them. We also publish a global industry map so you can find all the companies worldwide within the TEA as well as where all the local clubs are, well, all of the clubs. Um, and finally, uh, the university relations team is another asset for you. Um, any guidance, support, uh, we're here to ask questions or answer your questions all the time. So find out a little bit more about university relations. Um, you will hear me call it UNIRA, which is just an abbreviation. But what we do is we are the uh, kind of hands-on relationships for all the clubs. We're here to support students and um, 
university interest in any capacity that we're capable. And we represent you guys within the Next Gen uh, Committee. Uh, so if you need anything from us, uh, we are here for you. That looks like a designated ambassador. So once you become an established club, we will assign someone from the university relations team to be a, a direct contact for you. Um, we also, like I said, represent you uh, on the next gen committee and to the greater TEA. So if there's any issues and you don't feel comfortable uh, bringing it up, we are happy to do that. Um, we pass along resources as they are created or as we find out about them. Um, I send emails every couple weeks to keep you guys up to date. For new clubs, we're the ones in charge of getting you on board, making sure you have access to all the resources. Um, we also collect feedback from all the clubs. So twice a year, we like to hear what you guys are doing, what we can do better, um, what you guys are interested in doing in the future. Um, we publish alerts to keep you guys in the loop. So a lot of news comes from the TEA and from your local division and from the next gen thing, but we like to make sure that you hear it from us also. And finally, guidance and support. We're here for you. So who is Unirel? Um, you, I've already introduced myself and Marissa has already introduced herself. So here's the rest of the team. Walter, if you'd like to introduce yourself. One moment, I believe we have to get. Hi guys, it's Walter. Uh, I am the team ambassador for the West Coast schools mostly. And uh, my background is from Penn State University. I lived in Orlando for 15 years and moved to California in 2011. All right, and next we've got Mallory. Hi, I'm Mallory Paddock. Um, I'm an ambassador for the Northeast, so a lot of the engineering schools, but I'm also the ambassador for SCAD because I am an alumni. Um, you know, several of us are. I know Ariel is, Diane is, Marissa is, and I am. Um, but uh, I'm currently the ambassador for them as well. Um, I also work with Diane at American Scenic, and um, I happened to have secured that job through a GigGab event. Uh, next, we've got Dana. Hey, everyone. This is Dana Hedges. I'm also a team ambassador. I am the ambassador for the Southeast schools. Um, I'm located in Orlando, Florida. I work for EXP. Um, and I'm also the ambassador for Penn State because that is my alma mater. Go Penn State TPEG, woohoo! And Andrew? Hi everybody, uh, I'm Andrew O'Rourke. Um, I am a member of uh, the UniRail committee, but not, uh, not an ambassador. Um, I am currently an associate producer at Google um, in Mountain View, California. Um, I did my undergrad uh, at Duke University and did my uh, graduate work at Carnegie Mellon at the Entertainment Technology Center. Um, been in the industry for a bit, worked for Disney and then the Computer History Museum locally here before. Um, and now I've been at Google for about a year. And finally, Ariel. Hey everybody, um, my name's Ariel. I am, I'm also on the UNRL committee as just a member um, representing the TEA at SCAD club. Um, I just graduated from SCAD with my MFA in themed entertainment design and been working on figuring out what's next. Thank you. So in addition to us, there's lots of other channels that you can get TEA news from. Um, the homepage has all of the information you will need, um, but you can also sign up for emails if you are a member. Uh, there is a Facebook, and Twitter and Instagram for the general greater TEA, as well as specific next gen channels. There's the Facebook, the Twitter, and finally the TEA YouTube, which I think is a particularly great asset. There are a lot of past presentations and it's a great resource if you're looking for something specific or you're interested in researching a past project. Uh, there's kind of a several different breakdowns of uh, channels within TEA TV. There's TEA Talks, which is like this, the webinars or student and young professional interest lectures. Um, there are full state and summit past presentations. 
um, which are state is more design thinking case studies or sorry more design thinking um, current topics within the industry and then summit is case studies of all the athea, athea awardee projects and finally there's the skills codex which is networking advice professional skill building so another great resource uh, for students Finally, our last section is recognition. So in addition to networking, um, another aspect of um, the TEA's foundation is rec getting rec gaining recognition for the industry. Um, that in the greater uh, industry-wide sense that manifests as the FIA Awards. It's um, in order to uh, be nominated for a FIA Award or to um, have it awarded, the owner has to publish a list of credits and that is how the credits are published and those companies gain recognition. So similarly, it's important for you guys to gain recognition. And if you're attending events, that's a great way to get visibility. We also have next gen media coverage. Um, and there's, and as you can see, like with the list of things we are currently developing for next gen, there's a lot of opportunity out there. So if you're interested in starting a club, how do you do that? It's a pretty easy process. Get started with gaining a couple students um, and at least one faculty advisor. Um, we wanna make sure it's more than just yourself and make sure that you follow up with any university policies that you have. Um, after you've checked all that off your list, there's a form on the TEA website. If you go to the Next Gen tab and then the TEA at University Clubs tab, you'll find a PDF that has all of the university guidelines as well as the form you need to fill out. So once you've filled out that form, you can send it via email to myself or Marissa or TA headquarters. For existing clubs, you've already filled out that form. You don't need to know about that, but there are some things we wanna make sure that you're aware of um, to help you get started in the fall. So if you haven't done so already, Make sure to transfer ownership of past files and any accounts that you have, which would include a copy of the guidelines, so make sure you have that. If you haven't uh, already done so, make sure that you reach out to us and tell us who your current leadership team is. So we publish that on the directory, and then we also use that uh, for access to the Facebook page. And if you haven't done so, please do join the leadership Facebook page because we like to see your faces there. Finally, uh, now is a great time to plan out schedules. If you have, um, large events for your club or if you're interested in traveling to industry events because I know within um, the academic sphere it can be very challenging to get permission for time off especially since um, some events fall during finals and things like that so always be thinking ahead. There's only a couple obligations um, during the year that you need to do if you haven't a uh, with the guidelines, make sure that you're reading those and finding, uh, following all the details. But on a large scale level, um, if you are interested in creating a next gen event or doing something like a webinar that follows specific existing TEA branding, um, it has to be approved by the TEA and that needs to be managed through the next gen. So just reach out to one of us. Um, we also have two check-ins per year. It's pretty easy. We just give you a, a little web form and uh, we like to hear your feedback. Um, make sure that you are doing the membership welcome presentation, which a lot of this information will seem familiar already to those of you who uh, are doing that. But we want to make sure that you're really fluent with it because it can get a little complicated sometimes. Um, and finally, when we do send emails or there's event updates, make sure you're passing that along to your membership. So as I mentioned, it can get a little confusing. Um, there, we frequently refer to membership, but I want to make sure that everyone understands that there's kind of two different levels of membership and that you can be both at the same time. We have the club's membership and the next gen membership. So a club membership, you're meeting other students interested in the industry. It's uh, established with your campus, so it's a more local interest. Um, you can pursue projects and other topics um, within the club itself and you can bring in professionals and speakers um, or pursue other opportunities and develop professional skills and just meet other people and stay fluent in industry topics. As a next gen member, you are registering with the TEA, so it's more of an official uh, individual membership with the TEA, but you have access to the TEA events. There's local mixers within each region. 
Um, there's next gen exclusive events like the GiveGab. Um, there's educational panels, um, GiveGab. We like we like talk that one up, but it's pretty popular. It sells out every time. Um, and then the state and summit and FIAs, which are again great opportunities to learn. Um, we also have the members only scholarships. So when we say members only, there we mean the next gen members. And finally, as Marissa said, you can create a TEA profile on the website and you have access to uh, the TEA job board. So in terms of looking at industry events and planning for those, here's the major events that are on the calendar that you can look towards. We have the uh, state conference, which stands for Storytelling, Architecture, Technology, and Experience. Um, it is happening September 26th to 27th this year in Seattle, Washington. We also have the IAPA Expo coming up in November in Orlando, Florida, which is um, a, the trade show for all of IAPA, but where the TEA hosts a booth and will announce next year's CEO awardees each year. And then coming up in the spring, just a little bit more long-term, we have the TEA Summit and the 26th Annual Thea Awards from April 16th to 18th in Anaheim. And that is where you will see the case studies and also the awards gala itself. And there's also local divisional events. So make sure to follow up with Eastern or Western division as well. So for those of you who are not students, um, the university relations team also wants to be there to support you. So if there is anything that we can do for you, please, please reach out. We'd love to know what we can do to support all of you. So time for questions. Um, we, I believe we have been collecting questions this whole time. And if we don't get to all of them, you can reach out to uh, TA headquarters or Marissa or myself at any time and we will do what we can. So I'm going to hand it over to Andrew for Q&A. All right, thanks. So we've had a couple questions come in so far um, and keep them coming in as um, questions come up to you. But the first one we have from um, Reese, who's calling in from Maryland. Um, the question is, I'm from Maryland and we don't have a TEA university club in my area. Is there any way I can join another college's club? Um, and Reese, I would be interested to know, I think, and maybe you can put this in the questions, um, if you are a student of a university right now. Um, but yeah, does anyone want to take that question? Um, we do have a University of Maryland, Baltimore County, so it's possible that he could reach out to them. Um, if, if you go to the uh, TA at University page on the TA website, there is a public directory, so you can get their contact information there. All right, um, next question is from, I, oh, go ahead. Andrew, can I, I just want to add really quick, um, Reese, we hope that you, after watching this, can uh, share this. This will be recorded and put on TEA TV, so we hope that you grab other students from your college and a uh, faculty member and start your own club. That would be ideal. But yes, um, just like Diane mentioned, there is a red, uh, directory as well. Sorry, Andrew, I just wanted to add that. No, thank you. And we just did get a response from Reese um, that he is a recent graduate. Okay. Um, just so you know, but Great. yeah. All right. Thank you, Reese. <laughs> um, so uh, next question is from Cameron um, at the Cal Arts TEA Club. And the question is, how can I connect directly to the leadership of clubs nearby my school? Uh, I would say same thing again. Uh, the directory is uh, the main way to find uh, local clubs. And we are, uh, this is Marissa again, I just want to add that we are working on a top secret ho, 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 no, um, way to connect you guys more consistently. Um, and then also, I think Diane just mentioned the Facebook group, but that could be somewhere for now. Uh, the, the more that you guys check in with Diane and let her know what you've been doing, the the easier it is to kind of share what you've been doing with other clubs as well. Great point. All right. Next question is from TPEG at OSU. Um, Robert is asking the question. 
Um, so thank you so much for organizing this webinar. Would you consider having a regular audio slash webinar call with representatives from each TEA student group to update each other on what we're doing? Feels like this could help us stay connected with each other and the next gen ambassadors. Yeah, I think we could do that. Um, we have some semi-regular uh, calls as university relations. And if you're interested in uh, maybe calling in or um, hosting, uh, well, doing something like that, uh, let me know and I will add that to our list of things to do. I think that'd be great if, um, say, so for example, um, one time university club did a project, um, how much they think it would cost to operate Westworld for, for one day. And I think that'd be cool if the clubs around the country wanted to share a project they've done or an event that they've hosted and maybe give a five to 10 minute presentation and maybe that's something we can organize moving forward. Um, like Diane just mentioned, maybe we'll do this webinar once a quarter or something like that. Yeah, and also um, to plug the Facebook page again, that's not just an avenue for us to post and share things for you guys. Um, as leadership, you guys should have access to it and you can post questions or share ideas or share follow-up events um, on things that you've done, good ideas that worked, things that didn't. It's all for you guys. So don't be afraid of posting there. And as a clarification, the uh, Facebook leadership page is currently for the leadership of university clubs. So those of you who are in presidential, vice presidential, those level of, of activity within the club, um, it's not open to absolutely everyone. Um, but again, like Marissa said, we are working on a, a way to uh, connect students from all of the clubs. Great. Um, the next question is from Harris at UCLA. Um, it's, can you post this PowerPoint online somewhere so I can give it to the rest of the UCLA club? Um, I know we are recording the event. Um, and how exactly are we going to be uh, distributing that recording? That'll go on our YouTube TV channel. There we go. Uh, and so Harris. Oh, sorry, Diane, is it possible to share the um, the deck as well? Yes, um, there is a very similar presentation existing in the uh, resource Dropbox for those of you who have access to it, um, which is the one that has all the information that you guys need um, without all of our extraneous stuff. So if you don't have access to that, please email me and I will get it in your hands. Great. All right, next question is from Kenneth. For existing clubs, what are your dues and how do you entice members to pay those dues? I think that may be a question for other clubs. Yeah, as far as uh, the TA university programs in general, there are not dues unless you wish to become a next gen member. And I believe the current next gen rate is $50 annually and that's individually it um, is not directly related to the clubs. So there's a lot of conflict between each university um, in terms of what they are or not allowed to do in terms of you know, uh, dues. So it's mostly just on our end, the next gen program. For now, there is no group TEA membership for university clubs, but um, you know, we are still here even without you having to be a TEA next gen member individually yourself. Hey, so I just want to jump in one more time. This is Marissa again. Um, we as TEA um, cannot support or control if you guys have club fees on your own. That really is something that needs to be decided upon at your school. A lot of schools have um, kind of club governorship, so that's something you'll have to check with their guidelines. Um, but that's not something that we can either support or deny if you guys decide to do that. Um, I will say the one thing is to make sure that everyone in your club agrees with the fee um, if you do uh, decide to enforce a fee. Thanks, Marissa. Uh, next up is from Brian. As far as branding goes, do the club names need to be TEA at blank or can clubs be named differently? Thanks. So that is uh, something that's currently missing from the guidelines, which we are working on uh, 
updating currently. Sorry. Uh, yes, the clubs do currently need to follow the TEA at your university uh, branding, and we will provide the logo to you. But you do have some flexibility in there. Um, for example, I believe we just had um, Cal Poly Pomona join as our most recent club. And uh, we talked through a few options, like whether they wanted to be TEA at Cal Poly Pomona or TEA at CPP. And I believe they ended up going with TEA at CPP. So if there's something you prefer, as long as it's not the same as an existing club, um, then it's all good. Okay, right. um, next, next is from Marcella. And I, th this was a question for all of the clubs present. Um, so perhaps we can speak to kind of what we know from um, survey results and such. Um, but the question is, how often are your clubs holding meetings? I think that probably varies a lot depending on your school calendar. So clubs that are uh, short with quarters where it's only like a 10 week session, probably holding weekly meetings. Um, for other clubs, it could be less often, but I would encourage you to hold clubs as frequently as, as you think is manageable right. with everyone's academic schedules. Um, because even if it's just a casual meeting, you know, you get together and maybe you talk about industry news or um, just catch up with each other in projects you're working on. Um, the socializing is as important in this industry as it is to be doing large projects and things like that. So um, definitely, I don't want it to take over your academic schedule, but I think frequently it makes you think about it and it stays fresh. Do what feels right for you, your club, your university, and your membership. Because some clubs have membership where people's majors may have a little more flexibility, whereas you might have a club that's all architecture students who just have no flexibility at all, you know, or engineering students, same, same there. So it really depends on, on your audience, so to speak. And Marcella, again, um, I would, uh, advice definitely take advantage of the club directory if you're interested in um, casting a broader net um, and asking from your fellow um, club clubs um, all right next question is from UCSD um, you're interested in making a competition for other TEA clubs to enter what is the process to do this so for any larger event that's going to involve other clubs or um, outside groups outside of your club, um, that's something that needs to be coordinated with uh, the TA and Next Gen Committee. So go ahead and get in touch with either someone on University Relations or with Marissa, and we will help get that process started. Draft a proposal of some form, see if there's any kind of added costs you think need to be um, dealt with. I don't think it, I don't know if at this time the TEA is prepared to fund that kind of thing, but I think depending on the idea that you bring to the table, there's always discussion room. Um, and yeah, I mean, the, the more uh, together and formal of, of a proposal you've got, um, the more likely it is to move up the chain a lot that much quicker. Um, next up is from Cal Poly Pona. Um, we are a newly established club. Are there any good fundraiser suggestions uh, or any project ideas for little to no budget? I think uh, that's a good question, again, to pose to other clubs. So um, the Facebook page or use the directory and reach out. Um, we don't have yet uh, like currently like a list of ideas or anything. Um, we're hoping to get something similar to that off the ground, but um, that's a great question to get you guys talking to each other. And you can also uh, reach out to your ambassador um, if they have not reached out to you already and um, start a dialogue with them if you are having problems coming up with certain ideas that you want to see manifested. Um, they can always be a great resource to help you brainstorm. Yeah, uh, another good idea. Um, 
the resources that we talked about, so things like um, the TEA YouTube channels and uh, the FIA award publications um, are a great asset that I've relied on a lot as to do case studies and things like that. And they're free. I just wanted to respond to the fundraising. Um, we can't SDA uh, encourage or give suggestions on how to do fundraising, but I think the great thing about the Facebook channel and just sharing again with Diane and the University Relations team um, what's worked for you guys so we can share it with other clubs, we're happy to do that. Um, we just can't ourselves give you guys ideas for fundraising and that sort of thing. Perfect. All right. Next question is from, um, from Robert. Um, and looks like he's interested in learning a little more about what you were talking about earlier, Marissa. Um, loves the sound of connecting next gen clubs more. What kind of communication medium would this secret project be? Is there anything we're... <laughs> I know. <laughs> anything it's so mean. Um, <laughs> we've worked at different, um, I'm sure you guys have heard of Slack and Asana and Google or um, Microsoft Teams. We've looked at ways that we can uh, connect us all kind of on a messaging based system so that we um, can kind of connect kind of like the Facebook, but, but better. Um, that's kind of all I can say for now, but we are working on it and we hope to have something announced soon for you guys. And if you have any other suggestions or things you'd like to see, please let Diane know and the team. Um, I know probably when all of you became next gen members or um, will become next gen members, you get what looks like an automated um, email from myself. Um, you do get an automated one from TEA, but I actually do take time to write and send you that, that welcome email. And same thing with Diane and the team. They really do um, take a lot of time out of their day to respond to you. Um, so if you do have ideas or suggestions after this webinar, we'd be more than happy to take them and uh, to hopefully put them into action. All right. Um, next up is from Nicholas, and this is less a, que less a question and kind of a comment, I think, to react to. Um, our club invites all majors and skills, but TEA and even Themed Entertainment Association is very vague, and it has difficulty for uh, advertising and recruitment purposes. What was that last part of it? Difficulty for what? Um, it's vague and I think what Nicholas means to say is it, it, it makes advertising and recruitment difficult. The question continues um, below that and it says, what's a good definition for themed entertainment and how do you suggest we market it? Oh, thank you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Aha, there is a question. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, go ahead, Marissa. <laughs> Who wants to use on first? Um, well, I was just going to say. <laughs> To the chat, there's a great video by um, Monty. He is our founder of the TEA, and he really explains what TEA is. Um, and I think, um, you know, a definition. There's many definitions you could use, and I hope someone else on the team may have something more concise. But that any um, person who is a part of creating a compelling experience. Um, so that I know that may sound vague, um, but I think that's important that it's like that. Because if you go back to the slide that we had pulled up, um, there are so many professions that go into, um, say, for example, the new Star Wars land. There are fabricators, designers, illustrators, project managers, media people, show writers, musicians, um, fabricators. There are reps, so people who sell the materials that go into that. You name it, that goes into it. It's not just a designer who does that sort of thing. I hope that that's helpful. Does anyone else have a better definition for themed entertainment? I think that's an excellent definition. Um, I mean, it, it goes even broader from there. Um, there have been the award-winning projects that are um, focused on sustainability. So they involve scientists as well as um, green business people that do MFAs in, in sustainable business and sustainable design. Um, it, it's very broad. It's honestly, you can market it as, hey, do you want to find the creativity in your major? Do you want to find what you can create and build with the things that you love to learn about? Um, let's brainstorm together. 
about ways to bring your skills into the real world. Yeah, and um, I know that as part of the club support resources, we do have some published um, basic recruitment posters, but as clubs, you're not beholden to those in any way. And I would encourage you to follow not strictly the interests of your club because you're trying to draw in more people, but also let your club's personality come out. So if um, it's an engineering school, you probably have a more uh, strict interest in maybe building roller coasters and things like that. Um, so don't be afraid to lean into that as well. You, you have an identity, go with it. Yeah, and to add to that too, I'd say I, I feel like there's a lot of success to be had by leaning on the amazing and extremely well-known products that come out of the industry. Theme parks are super well-known. Um, museums are super well-known. Um, a, a lot of the you know, specialty installations are really famous. Um, and if I think it's a really compelling ask to like, hey, to say, hey, do you wanna be a part of creating this? And then the conversation kind of goes from there. Like, yes, it involves all these different disciplines. Like, let's talk more. Um, but that, I think, could be an easy attractor if you're looking for something that's easy to market. I think one other, part, to, one other part that's important to remember is that it doesn't have to be grand in scale. You could build Westworld, uh, where you build an entire immersive world that you know people can go and play in and spend days and weeks playing in. Or it could be as simple as a small kiosk that people interact with, as long as it's telling a creative and compelling story and, and helping move that forward. So that interaction, that moment where people come in and experience something that they can't experience somewhere else, it could be that simple. Uh, so your CS majors, your programmers, your uh, people who are designing simple things can be TEA members. And uh, as a CS and computer science guy, uh, I, I like saying, hey, don't forget the nerds. Um, so. <laughs> All right. Um, I think we have time for maybe one more question. Um, we, we don't have any more questions. Um, we have a couple of comments from Robert uh, answering um, some previous questions. Um, just to share one of them, for instance, um, for the person who was asking, I forget who exactly, um, that regular club holds meetings once a week for general body members and then holds a planning meeting once a week as well for the executive board and to plan events and trips and such. Um, oh, we had one more question come in. Do we have time for one more? All right. Uh, this is from Juan. Uh, is there funding that we can use for making our projects at school events? We currently don't have funding directly within the TEA um, aimed at the TEA at university clubs, um, but as a support team, university relations would love to help you find uh, other sources. So a great resource would be to look at your uh, schools, uh, either like kind of the governing body or like the social body. Um, there's frequently a fund available for students or student clubs to access. Um, as well as other avenues that we can help you. So if, if you're looking for something particular, please do reach out. Anyone else have any other thoughts on that? I think you did it. All right. Um, with that, we are running out of time. So thank you all for coming this evening. Um, I wanted to give one last shout out to UCSD because I believe I missed them earlier. Um, I am so thankful to have uh, such a great presence from all you guys. It was great to see you. And uh, for those of you who are not currently involved in the club, I hope I will hear from you soon. Um, you've got our emails. So if there's any other questions or anything we can do for you, we're here for you. And thanks for coming. I did want to um, add one more thing, Diane, if that's OK. Um, this is Marissa again. So. Um, I just had to uh, go through, I just wanted to add a little note so that uh, all these officers can bring them back to their clubs or perhaps there's a lot of new um, people interested in joining Next Gen. The biggest difference between being a TEA University club member and an actual um, TA Next Gen member, um, and like Diane mentioned, it's $50 a year. 
Um, you have to be a Next Gen member registered through the TEA and not just a club member in order to apply for scholarships. Um, and I mentioned this because we just awarded 10 scholarships today to the TEA um, SATE conference happening at the end of next month in Seattle. Um, and some people, I think, were just club members and weren't actual members and weren't able to um, submit their application. Um, so that, I think, is a huge benefit of it. Also being able, a lot of our events are members only, um, which means you'd have to be a TA member to attend. Um, and I think that's a huge benefit to membership. Um, so something else that happens a lot of times, example, for IAPA and for Summit, um, we have 50 people apply in only 10 spots, but we do keep a list of who's applied in the past or feel free to email me when you submit your application and just say, hey, Marissa, you know, I applied last year and didn't get, an, and didn't get in a scholarship because um, I keep a list of that because we try to keep it as fair as possible. Um, today, I was able to award two scholarships to next year members who um, did not, uh, did not receive one last time. So. I just want to mention that um, the scholarships typically just get you entrance to the uh, the conference. It doesn't actually ever pay for hotel or flights, um, but it's a huge cost savings. Um, and the other great thing about an extra membership is, say you don't get awarded a scholarship, but you already have your flight and hotel, you do get a discounted ticket. That's typically um, a great reduced cost from the um, just standard member ticket. So I just, anyways, I just wanted to throw that out there. I'm sorry to Diane to um, cut off the, the goodbye. Um, just because I felt like that was important to share and clarify. Yeah, um, I think anything we can do, if you do have questions about the difference between club membership versus next gen membership, that's something we try to make sure that you all know how to answer because it can get confusing. So it's never too much of an explanation in my book. Yep. And uh, kudos to the university relations team. Thank you guys so much for working so hard for the TA University Clubs. Um, I'm so glad I got to scroll through the questions and see all of you from the TA University Clubs throwing out suggestions and questions. And it's really great to see you guys so active. So if there's anything that we can do to help, please let us know. All right. Thank you. <laughs>